Good morning, and again, welcome to St. Patrick's. As we begin our liturgy now, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord be with you. My dear friends, as we prepare ourselves now to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment to acknowledge our own sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive. God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in this bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. She said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, yes. She has no son and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, call her. When the woman who had been called and stood at the door, Alicia promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, 
my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Bless the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. You are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel our King. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, again, welcome to St. Patrick's this morning as we take a few moments now to think about this 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. There's a simple message in today's readings. And I think it takes us back to the idea, if we think about our parents, our friends, mentors, relatives, all, peop all these people who have blessed our lives in many ways. You know, if you can go back and think about, you know, as you were growing up, who influenced you the most to be able to do what you're doing now? As you stop and think about that, 
you can almost think of the person who helped you. You know, for example, you know, I can remember working in a grocery store. And it was because of a friend of mine who came and told me that they had an opening and his dad wanted me to come over there and work with him. And so during high school, I learned how to bag groceries and stock shelves and, and work behind the meat counter and learn a lot of things that were very beneficial if I had stayed in that kind of a job. But again, it was a very influencing position. And yet, perhaps I learned many things just by working in that job. Maybe it only paid 75 cents an hour, but it wasn't that. It was the fun and what I learned. And so you can always think of all these people that taught you your skills to make you who you are today. And so we can now see what the readings are telling us, that those people who helped us to be better than who we are, in our lives have been a great reward for all of us. And they indeed have been prophets to all of us. You know, even, doesn't matter, even in high school or beyond, even yet today, as we all grow older, there are always somebody or someone who's going to touch our lives and to make us think about the precious gifts we, can, we have. And so, let's think about who our friends are, and how well they benefit us in our talents and gifts, and they bring out the best in our lives. So as we now take a look at our readings, we have a very interesting reading. You know, Jesus says to us, all these things that those people have given you are blessings, but if, if you love them more than you love my blessings, you're not worthy of my blessings. You know, we don't like to hear that. But Jesus says that to his apostles. Whoever, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So as we stop and think about those words that Jesus is telling us, even though we've been blessed in many ways from our friends and relatives, but Jesus is saying, if we don't love him more than them, then they're all useless gifts and useless rewards. So as we turn now to our first reading, you know, it's kind of interesting in our first reading, Elisha comes to visit this family. And again, we have no name. We do not know who they are. No name is mentioned. And so he comes and visits this couple. But of course, the husband takes the back role. He kind of sets out of the picture. And so now the woman urges him to dine with them. And so eventually every year he would stop by on a journey and he would have dinner with them until finally she says to her husband one time, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp so that when he comes to us, he can stay here. Well, think about that for a few moments. How many of you have relatives or friends who may come once a year? Are you going to go home today and prepare a room for them with a table, lamp, and desk, and bed? It doesn't make much sense. We probably would not be doing that. But yet, the first reading is reminding us of the prophets and telling us and reminding us to open our hearts to God's blessings in our lives. You know, and then sometimes, you know, we don't like what the prophets are going to say. And we may say, oh, well, here they come again. But this time, as he, Elisha leaves, he says to her, the next time I come next year, you will be blessed indeed. And 
of course, it tells us that they were getting up there in years. And as she stood at the door, Elijah promised her, next time next year, you'll be founding a baby son. What a blessing that she received from being a welcoming guest, going out of her way to welcome that stranger. A blessing indeed from God. Yes, they may have had a house, but they were wanting a child very bad. And then in the end, they're given the greatest blessing that you could ever ask for, is to have a child. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ is the faithful high priest who knows our weaknesses. We approach him now with confidence. For all Christians that we die to sin and live for God in Christ Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. For governors and lawmakers, that they respect freedom of religion in all their votes and decisions, let us pray to the Lord. For travelers and summer vacationers, that they make time for Sunday Mass and daily prayer, let us pray to the Lord. For our nation, as we prepare to celebrate Independence Day, that we be thankful for all who have given service to keep our country free, let us pray to the Lord. For our family parish as children of light, that we strive to follow the bright light of truth, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are marching for justice, that they may be kept safe, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Help us by your grace to take up our cross and follow you every day of our lives through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. 
And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. My dear friends, let us still continue to pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deeds by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death and summoned us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so now with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And 
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us now offer each other a sign of that peace. And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Make me a channel of your peace. This morning, I want to say thanks to all of those of you who are here who have made the effort to, to come to be with us to celebrate this morning, and also to all of those of you who are at home watching us on TV or on YouTube. You know, if you get a chance, just drop us a little line and let us know what you think about our, our masses and trying to get that out to you so that you can be able to attend mass and to kind of feel at home, because someday we hope that you'll be back with us. But again, we have to deal with this virus, and so in doing so, it might be a while yet before we get back to full capacity. But in the meantime, just let us know what you think, and we appreciate, we appreciate hearing from you. And again, if you can help us in any way, we can always use that little bit of help. Thank you. And let us pray. 
May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go now in peace.